Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Superman Sazam, The Return of Black Adam. This is an extremely good DC animated short. Many people think it's a movie, it's not. It's just a short, but I can understand why people get that confusion. It was at that time the longest animated short that DC had and when they were making their animated movies. DC is very fixated on Batman, Superman, and the Justice League. They don't like to steer away from it. For over 40 something years, the only movies we ever got live action was Batman, Superman, and it started to change only a little in the um, couple of years ago. In animation, they are only fixated on Batman and Superman and the Justice League. Whenever they branch off, those movies don't do particularly well in the other heroes, so they always go back to the well. If they do want to introduce a new hero, they always add in Batman, Superman, or the Justice League. They had a Flash solo movie, they added the Justice League. Or no, they added, well, the Justice League and Batman mainly. They wanted a Supergirl movie, they added Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Um, somebody, oh, they wanted the Justice League Dark. They added Batman for some bizarre reason. They can't get over those three because those are money makers. And just like with Sazam and Black Adam, they added Superman in the thrust. Now, what makes this animated movie so great? Or um, short, I'm just gonna call it movie short, whatever. Um, what it makes it so great is the animation is flawless. It has a very anime-ish type look. The color palette's a little subdued, a little muted slightly. Superman wears like a muted bluish gray type suit. They did this because I believe Man of Steel came out around the same time. So they were trying to copy off that. And so like, but they gave Superman his classic blue hairstyle from like the comics. Y'all remember that where it's like blue and black and stuff like that. Uh, but they made it like a, a weird muted shaded blue and a light blue. Um, it's kind of weird having him with blue hair. It's kind of like Wolverine and the older X-Men cartoons and comics and stuff. Um... What also makes this great is that it focuses on Billy Baxton, the classic Billy Baxton. Um, they did not go the New 52 route, and thank God for that. I hate the New 52, like Shazam, Billy Baxton. Billy should always be a lighthearted, good, kind-hearted person who takes up the powers of Captain Marvel. Not some arrogant little punk who steals and cusses people out and stuff. And that's why I never liked about the new 52 version. I wish they would get away from that in the like DCEU. Um, what's great about this is that seeing Superman and Captain Marvel team up to take on Black Adam. That was just like amazing and everything. I wish this could have been longer and more explored. They do have to rush certain things. I uh, was really confused about the mythos of like Captain Marvel because I've seen so many different versions and animation and stuff and everyone is slightly different than the other one. I really love the one from the Justice League Unlimited cartoon series. Jerry O'Connell from like Sliders is back to voice Billy Baston. Oh, not Billy Baston, but um Captain Marvel. And um he is he also voiced them in Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, I know my voice sounds weird. It's cold <laughs> and stuff. And every time I talk, it's cold. I need to turn the heat on. <laughs> but it, it's going to be 80 again on the weekend, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, George um, Newborn, I think his name is. He's back to voice Superman from Justice League Unlimited. What's insane is that Jerry O'Connell has voiced both Captain Marvel and Superman on two different occasions. He was the Superman in the New 52 animated movies. He was, of course, Captain Marvel on this and Justice League. And he was even Nightwing in the Batman cartoon series. Um, so Jerry is no stranger to like DC and he changes his voice up for each role and I like that. This Billy and this Captain Marvel are similar to that of the Justice League animated one. Um, 
they do rush things very, very, very quickly. Uh, Winnie from the Wonder Years, she plays a prostitute in this, and all she does is, mm. <laughs> that's all she says. They got that big name actress for that teeny tiny role <laughs> and stuff. But this basically shows, like, you know, Billy, he is an idol of Superman. That's what I like about him. He's this kind-hearted, sweet little boy who happens to be an orphan. He lives by himself in an apartment along with other homeless people and prostitutes and drug dealers and stuff. And, like, you know, we see him wearing his Superman shirt. He has three rats living in his apartment. He feeds them. There's barely no food in his apartment, but he's this happy-go-lucky kid, and he shouldn't. He lives in Fawcett City. That's a terrible name just on its own. <laughs> <laughs> but he's this happy-go-lucky kid and that's what I like about him because you know you see why he's given the powers that he does which I never understood about the new 52 one why did he get the powers and he's such a punk and so as he's walking down the street he sees this like good old um gangster dude and from what the credits say is Bambi's Bambi is the prostitute, and that's her boyfriend. He's like some teenager. He has a gang. He's trying to um, rob from a homeless man. Is a black dude. I forget the name. I think it might be Tony or something like that. Um, but he's trying to rob from him. And Billy, as young as he is, is trying to defend the homeless man, knowing he's literally about to get his butt kicked. And but you know, that's a very heroic thing trying to defend somebody, even though you know you're puny. And you're gonna get your butt kicked and he gets smacked around smacked hard so basically the homeless man thanks him for saving his life but wants to know he got any money <laughs> oh boy i swear and so all he has is like um i don't know i think he, maybe he gives him money or maybe he gives him like a bus token or something but no i think he gives him money or something like that um whatever little money he has left and so you know the homeless dude's all like you know i'll hit you back up one day you know like a favor for a favor and so he's going to meet clark kent because clark kent wants to interview him and wants to buy him breakfast and that boy is starving and everything and basically you know they have a heart to heart talking about how he always tries to do the right thing but they always come back to slap him in the face like literally this morning and I love the way he talks about, like, you know, how, like, you know, he was good when he was born. He was good when he was an orphan. And, heck, he was good even five minutes ago. <laughs> he got smacked around. <laughs> and he just doesn't understand why people, like, pick on him. And, you know, like, you know, he wishes he was more heroic and stuff like that. Now, in the beginning of this movie, Black Adam crashes down, um back down to earth and it's a nice into window between this like couple that's making out and of course what does he do he kills them and he's looking for somebody we don't know who yet but then we find out he shows up at the diner outside and he can sense billy baston for some reason and maybe he senses him maybe he doesn't i don't know it's not really explained too well because like i said they have to rush this movie so basically, you know, Clark changes into Superman and him and Black Adam are fighting while he's trying to kill Billy. So he must sense something in Billy. But Superman is subdued because magic is affecting him. And it's a really cool action sequence between those two. But the first one's very brief. And so he tells Billy to run. Billy's trying to hightail it on out of there. You know, I would too, you know. And then he meets the homeless dude again. The homeless dude like, yo, man, I got your change back and everything. And he gives him a subway token ticket type thing or coin or whatever they call it. And so Billy's hightailing on out of there. Superman's still trying his best to fight Black Adam. But he's getting his butt handed to him. Like, literally. And so Billy goes down in the subway and all of a sudden all this magical stuff starts happening. He gets transported um to like a layer and we get to see the backstory of billy in this like um, as he's going on the subway and everything the token is what brought him there 
and he had a bad upbringing you know his foster parents were abusive and everything he lost his original parents and stuff now it's been hard for that dude you know and he meets the wizard Sazam and he tells him how he um Black Adam was his champion long ago he failed and he banished him for like 5,000 years to the farthest reaches of like outer space to like the farthest like star away from here and stuff and so that's where Black Adam has been for the longest time and he wants Billy to be his new champion and everything but Billy's not sure if that's what he wants to do but the wizard is going to do it anyway and so he's just like you know just, yo man just call my name say my name say my name when nobody is around you okay i'm gonna stop <laughs> i'm going all destiny child and stuff oops not throwing my camera and so like superman's still getting his butt whooped and billy's all kind of like yo man it's hero time <laughs> i'm here to stop you but then he's kind of like oh crap what did i get myself into and so like Black Adam is confused that the wizard, like, you know, who is this little whelp? He just, like, throws some, smacks him around. And so then he's chasing him, and he says the wizard's name, and he turns into Captain Marvel, and he is very shocked and confused. He's, like, an adult now, and he has all these powers. But he doesn't look in the mirror and see what he looks like, so how does he know? But he's just looking at his hands, and he knows he's bigger and stuff, and his voice has changed. And, um... He's very impressed by like, you know, his powers and he's having fun by them and everything. He's not like the silly, goofy thing you see in the DCEU. And Black Adam is very shocked and surprised that the wizard picked a little boy to be his champion. So therefore, he didn't know who Billy was, but he sensed something in him. And so he knows he's his replacement. Now, he never calls himself Captain Marvel and nobody does in the movie. Um, this is because around this time they were not allowed to use that name because um, Marvel has picked it up now for their Captain Marvel. And so I think they got away with it in Young Justice, but you know, in live action, they just can't do it. And so, and also in like, you know, the new 52 comics and in Justice League, uh, what is it? Um, Doom? No, the one. The one where they fight Dark Side, Justice League War, they can't say Captain Marvel. So anyway, Billy's getting used to his new powers. He knows he shouldn't be saying his name because he'll de-transform. In a way, it's a huge climactic battle between him and Black Adam. Superman tries to um, interfere, but then Black Adam um, makes the damn water like go throughout the city and Superman has to stop it. So I like how they don't let Superman overshadow that of Captain Marvel, even though they be, um, basically are sharing the same movie. And so, like, um, yeah, it's a huge battle and everything between Black Adam and Captain Marvel. And then Superman shows back up and he wants to know, yo, man, how'd you stop this and everything? He's all like, um cold breath oh that's who he sensed he didn't sense billy he sensed power in superman and everything and so like um because he realized they had the same similar powers and stuff so in a way now it's a huge battle between that of uh, um superman well no not yet not yet not yet not yet um I'm forgetting something oh now i remember Black Adam knows he's losing the fight, so he harms a woman and he threatens to kill her if Captain Marvel doesn't transform back into a little boy. Captain Marvel knows he's just going to die anyways if he does that, but he does it anyway to save this woman. Of course, Black Adam tricked him and tosses the woman. Superman saves the woman. Black Adam is literally trying to crush this little boy's face and they show it until Superman shows back up and save him. Now he trans back forms into like Shazam and boom. Now it's Superman and it's Shazam, um, Captain Marvel fighting against like Black Adam. And it's a huge fight and Black Adam is finally getting his hiney whooped in there. Thing. And it's about time. And so like, um... At some point, he transforms again, and then, you know, no, 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 this, now I'm thinking of something different. Anyway, so anyway, 
Captain Marvel is to the point where he is literally about to kill Black Adam. And the reason for that is because Black Adam got in his head. Black Adam told him earlier that, you know, I have the powers of a god. Why shouldn't I be a god? When you step on an ant, do you do it because you're an evil person? No, because you know you're a higher part of society. And I never thought about it like that, you know? Like what he's saying is making some kind of sense and everything. People squish, squish bugs not because they're evil, they just do it because they know they're bigger than them and everything and more powerful than them. But with that power comes responsibility and you shouldn't act like an arrogant prick. So that started to get into Captain Marvel's head a little bit where he realizes that this is the pure evil of evil and he needs to kill Black Adam. But Superman being the moral center um, lets him know this is not the way for heroes and stuff. All life is precious. So he spares Black Adam's life. And Black Adam lets you know, like, look, man, I'm just still going to keep doing what I'm doing until the homeless man shows up. And Black Adam noticed the homeless man and he's like Tawny and Captain Marvel doesn't understand how these two know each other. All of a sudden the black homeless dude turns into a tiger <laughs> and he has powers and everything. And he tells him like if you think you was exiled before, oh man, you ain't seen nothing yet when I'm done with you. So Black Adam is terrified of this because he just doesn't want to be banished no more. So... He ends his own life by saying, like, you know, Sazam. He gets hit with the lightning. He transforms back into his human self. But the man's been alive for over 5,000 years. So he ages very fast and he dies and turns into smoke and everything. Basically, you know, it ends with... um. Billy knowing that he has a greater purpose in life. He is literally can be the Superman of his city, Fawcett City. And so, but he's still getting picked on by that little gangster boy. And he's all like, because, you know, he's a hero now because Clark Kent wrote about it in his story. I don't know if he wrote that Billy is Captain Marvel or what. But the gangster dude's picking on him is all like, yo, man, here's a little hero. Say something, I dare you. Well, we hear lightning in the... Um, in the sky and you know what Billy said. <laughs> I would have loved to see that butt whooping and stuff. But all in all, this is an extremely good movie. I always wanted to see this version of Captain Marvel Billy in the DCEU in some form of live action, but we never will because it takes place in the New 52 um, version of them, which is quite a shame, but you know, you can't deny that this is one extremely good movie and stuff. It was nicely written. The animation was great. The action choreography was amazing. The voice acting is awesome and everything. Alrighty, well I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.